Hey everybody, as always, this is Eric Brown, your Beverly Hills real estate agent, bringing you the best of LA again, where we share cool local businesses here in the Los Angeles area and get to learn a little bit about the insights of that business. Today, I've got a really cool guest, my friend Benjamin and his business. Then I just pronounced it again. I'm going to have you do it for me. Patriglio? Patriglio. My name is Pazillo, but Even the company's better. name is Patriglio. Well, yeah. yeah. Uh, um, it's a word I made up to, to name the business. So it doesn't exist anywhere else. It makes convenient trademark and social media handles. And, uh, you see that pharmaceutical companies do it all the time with their, you know, created names for their uh, proprietary products. So if it works for them, I tried it too. Well, let's let's maybe dive in and you can give the inspiration around the name, but really start talking about the inspiration of the business and what it is. Absolutely. Uh, Actriglo as a idea that came to me after traveling through China in late 2015. I returned to Los Angeles where I'd flown into LAX hundreds of times before over the course of my uh, life and for the first time, having seen the type of cities I'd seen in China, these huge 15, 20, 25 million person cities, uh, LA looked kind of small. And I thought to myself that the future of LA in the 21st century would be denser and more vertical construction. Um, come to find out it's called urban infill. Right. And um, so uh Knowing what I knew about city planning and building and safety departments down at City Hall, I decided that there would be a need, that there wasn't a tool that would measure the current underutilized real estate, and there was a need for that, uh, you know, with the housing crisis to identify underutilized existing zoning that will move through the city's bureaucracy faster because it is not encumbered with any type of administrative or discretionary review. It's uh, what we call by right um, and is not subject to, you know, let's say uh, administrative review that might include uh, neighborhood council feedback or, um, you know, certainly nothing that has like a Q condition or a T condition. These are things that anyone who looks at zoning in the city of LA starts to recognize very quickly. There's special conditions that, you know, might apply to certain properties. So what I realized was that I could use data in particular geospatial data and identify where the cleanest by right properties were, meaning they would essentially move instantly to uh, plan check and because there really wasn't anything for city planning to review uh, in terms of a discretionary approval or an administrative approval. Uh, that became an online source uh, product um, service in late 2017. And then along came Opportunity Zones, which were naturally geographically driven in uh, 2018. And I realized soon thereafter that the value of the information we were analyzing and putting together for folks was a uh, uh, very lucrative and that um, we were better off really instead of trying to design a mainstream product to work with clients one-on-one -on -one and develop customized products and, and databases and real estate information tools. So started doing that um, 2019 and that really led to our success uh, ever since. Um, it turns out, you know, despite all of the different real estate information systems out there, um, there are still people who want a custom combination of information presented to them. And we provide that um, from you know, measurements on the uh, existing lots to historic lots. Those are lots that are underneath the parcel system. So, you know, in California, uh, different cities had different surveys, all this, you know, up until the 60s when the parcel map comes along and says, hey, counties are going to do this now. And 
um, essentially demarcated a bunch of assessor parcels. Well, those assessor parcels sometimes have more than one municipal lot underneath them. And where we find those, that allows a builder to move forward with two different building sites. Some people call these split lots. Um, some people call them, you know, grandfathered lots. Basically, they predate the Parcel Map Act of the 1960s. And those um, are also quite lucrative because of their uh, sort of flexibility to work uh, through the system as well. So for those LA residents that are listening, what Benjamin is, is referencing is software that he has created that allows you to kind of go through all of the bureaucratic layers to be exactly. able to get a better idea of ways to do infill development. And so this is a great insight for builders and developers. Yes. And he touched on a few key buzzwords. So those buzzwords were housing epidemic, which absolutely exists in LA, not only yeah. from the homelessness issue, but an affordable Correct. issue. Yes. Secondarily, LA is a very unique city in the fact that it is a city of sprawl. It yeah. doesn't have vertical um, access like Benjamin had mentioned in China. And we also see in San Francisco, Miami, Chicago, New York, LA is just not built that way. Correct. And so what Benjamin has created is a way to be able to create more density, which as we grow as a city, you can't just keep moving out. Your commutes will be hours, and LA traffic is a real beast. So, yeah. based on this, Benjamin, a great maybe next kind of question is you uh, you summarized all of that uh, very well. Thank you. I, I know okay. I, sometimes I get lost in technical uh, uh, speak, and um, it's unfortunately the nature of the work, but I appreciate that. That's a very good. Uh, 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 look at it. In fact, I might have to scribble that down uh, and <laughs> use it down the road. <laughs> Happy to help the, the old elevator pitch, as they say. Yeah. But but the person, and this is obviously interesting for anyone that knows big cities or anyone that lives in a big city, and particularly if you live here in LA. This product is geared towards obviously builders and developers. Who else is there? Are there other categories that could find this information insightful or useful? Oh, absolutely. Uh, 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 particularly as we go through this redevelopment phase we're about to hit. Um, you know, anyone really who's in a real estate acquisition mode where they're looking at properties and are finding themselves going to multiple sites, uh, really what we've done and, and appreciate the explanation is we kind of created a reverse phone book. Uh, some of us might remember those where you got the <laughs> you got the address and found the phone number and vice versa. You found the phone number, you got the address. And and the city systems don't allow that. You go to them now and you punch in one property and you learn all the information about that property. But for people who are in investment and real estate uh, acquisition for site development, being able to take the characteristics of the properties that work for your product and then finding all of the real world matches to that type of success saying basically, Hey, this, this, uh, uh, round peg went through the bureaucracy super fast. Where are there other round pegs like this in the city? And those people come to us and, and we find them for them. We, find, we make the definitive lists and index of, of them for them. Um, and we've done that in multiple cities throughout the West, um, Seattle, Portland, Denver, uh, uh, Phoenix, the Bay Area. Um, and you're absolutely right. You, you, you know, the sprawl of Los Angeles has reached maximum, you know, unlike some of the cities you mentioned that have three or two major, you know, sides uh, confines by water, we really only have one, that western sort of southwestern side, but we hit the mountains very quickly, and that's become where we're at. We've we've built out to the edge of nature, and we're seeing the ramifications of that. It's not so great. Plus, the human body is not really well adapted to do, you know, these daily commutes that some folks are engaged in. I, I remember when I had one myself, it was... <gasps> unknowingly very stressful you know and you would and then and uh i don't miss it one bit um and certainly with work from home you know we're seeing a lot more desire to take some of the houses in la which are typically small and on large lots and turn them into larger houses on the same size lot and and that indoor space and you know I, I, i'm sure you see these trends um in in your end of it so you you you're at the the customer facing part of it and 
I'm I'm back in the the factory way way out up in the little office up there tinkering away at night. <laughs> you know what's interesting about all of this though is like Los Angeles is a younger city when you compare yes. some of its contemporaries, right? So yes. if you look at cities that are on the East Coast, yes. it's had a hundred plus more years to be able to create infill. But you're right; they at some point a city starts to burst at the seams. Yep. Um, we have, I, I think I heard a statistic, if you might know this number better than me, that 70% of the American population rests in like 15 or 20 cities. Uh, that would not surprise me. Um, now, just to give you a size, a scale of size of LA, you could take the largest 10 cities of the United States by their geographic outline and fit them into the area of Los Angeles. And our population now of around 4 million is pretty consistent with the population was maybe 50, 60 years ago. You said something that I think a lot of folks who have traveled will understand, which is as cities get older, they face this increasing demand for space and eventually they get to that wall-to-wall -wall construction and if you've seen rome for example it's century upon century building upon building you know there's millions of different levels underneath rome uh, that people encounter but you go somewhere like new york city or boston and you baltimore and you see the row houses right away where early on they were building you know wall-to-wall -to, -wall to maximize uh uh, uh you know, the, the, the right of way and all the other stuff. But in some, I mean, Manhattan at one point was, you know, a uh, 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 farmland when, when, when the Europeans started to, to colonize it, frankly, um, you know, prior to that was just an Indian uh, uh, territory uh, land. Uh, um, but you see even Manhattan over the span of centuries as the, the, the farms become the houses become the row houses become the tighter houses. And you see that all throughout the city. Um, you see it in LA too, as you get down towards the water, the units tend to be and the houses tend to be smaller square footage. And as you get up more towards, you know, the, the, the foothills, you start to see, you know, large houses on large lots. And those are trade-offs um, that people make based upon what works for them. Um, you know, I remember when I first moved to LA in 1996, you know, I could get a, a, a one-bedroom duplex up in Los Feliz, or for the same money, I could get a studio, uh, uh, you know, maybe two blocks off the beach in Venice. So you, you start to make decisions. What's more important to me as an individual? Is it the indoor space or is it, you know, proximity to uh, one of the microclimates here? Because those are, two, even though they're not that far apart, 10, 12 miles, two different microclimates, particularly in the summer. You well, know? And, and my guess is with the Triglo, you're able to itemize some of that and make sure that the viewers um, that want to see that information are able yeah. to make sound decisions on whatever they would want to do for build development, info, et cetera. Yeah. So, yeah. so investors as well, you know, investment yeah. firms, a lot of times uh, are, are investing in real estate as, as part of their, uh, um, you know, investment strategy. And, and we do a lot of business with those type of firms that are targeting particular type of properties and they haven't been able to get the combination of information they want out of one system. So we do a lot of customized um, geospatial information processing and, and definitely we've got some examples of research that we've done up on our blog I uh, definitely would urge folks to, you know, if they're interested in this topic, uh, sign up for the uh, blog there and they'll be able to see new, you know, sort of studies that we've put forward or um, because this takes on a much larger context when you start looking at proposed planning and zoning changes and what are those impacts to neighborhoods and, um, you know, we're getting more and more into the market level analysis of of uh, particular property types single family multifamily industrial um it's doing very well in southern california it's quite maximized office space is a big concern there's there's about 50 percent occupancy and that i think you're seeing manifest in many of the regional banks that are heavily invested in uh, commercial real estate you know unlike single family there's no fannie mae or freddie mac in the background or multifamily. there's no hud commercial office space is financed largely by 
you know, regional financial institutions, small financial institutions. And with really up until the last few months, nobody knew what would be work from home or return to the office or what have you. And so some of these restrictions have completely dropped. Um, now people are realizing, hey, it's not going to be the same. And so we have a challenge with uh, buildings all over the United States and here in LA as well that are starting to default office buildings. And some of these are marquee properties, uh, uh, the gas tower, um, gas company tower downtown LA, 777 Fig, both of those under Brookfield, um, almost a, a billion dollars. And then, you know, you start talking about the measure ULA, which I think we should spend a little time chatting about because it impacts your your world as well. Um, that applies to commercial real estate too. So that one hundred million dollar office tower is now a one hundred and five million five hundred thousand dollar office tower, and Absolutely. and yeah, the, those are those have very real impacts, and 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 sometimes like physics, it's an equal and opposite reaction, um, and and that um, probably will not produce the type of revenue that whoever crafted it and helped organize the community around it um, thought it would. In fact, it's seemingly having a negative effect right now. And, and yeah, that, that's, that, that's, a, that's a whole other topic of yeah. trends and taxation and best use of properties. Yes. Uh, as we're already nearing, and I can't believe this, but as we're nearing the end of our time, we obviously could turn this into another conversation. <laughs> uh, we're going to pop all of Benjamin's uh, contact information here at the bottom. Like he said, visit his blog, take a look at the product itself. Benjamin, is there any last thing that you think the viewing audience, it's worth them hearing about the software and the product? Anything that you think we could share? Uh, you know, there is a next level of data analysis out there and it's geospatial meaning you can tie data to a point on the earth and once you start looking at data in terms of its proximity to other data you get a much different and more accurate picture of what's going on if then if you just look at zip code level or you know linear data uh, linear regression you know um, those are kind of on the paper X, Y, uh, even maybe uh, not even that, but but maps bring a whole new level of insight, and and that's really what we help people find. Um, so definitely would love to hear from anybody that has a topic they're looking into or has an idea of something that um, we might be able to work on with them. Uh, definitely uh, uh, look forward to those discovery calls. Thank you. Thanks, this this was awesome. Um, <laughs> like I said, all contact information is going to be here at the bottom. Perfect. Please connect with Benjamin at any point. As always, this is Eric Brown, your Beverly Hills real estate agent, bringing you cool businesses like Benjamin's. <laughs> uh, until the next time, folks, Benjamin and I signing off. Thank you, Eric, very much. <laughs>